And if you've never heard of or seen the goats in action of Rhode Island Goatscapes, let me tell you, you are missing out. Um, I'm going to let Wayne just take it away because he can tell you so much more about goats and goatscaping than I could ever, that's for sure. But I've actually seen these goats in action, and it is amazing. And believe it or not, they're actually friendly, some of most of them. Uh, they like to have you watch them when they're goatscaping. So, Wayne, tell us a little bit about, first of all, how did you ever get into goats and goatscaping? <laughs> uh, well, goats... Um... My partner, Jack, he actually introduced the idea of goats to our farm way back when we first started, and all we had was a couple of horses, and we had a little homestead in West Kingston. We wanted to have goat's milk and some chickens, and that's where we started um, with a couple of goats, and I just fell in love. And every time we bred goats for milk, we, of course, didn't sell them, and we don't use them for meat. I'm vegan except for the goat milk um, and that we don't even breed anymore but we do have a steady supply of goat's milk from a goat who has a medical condition who has to be milked daily but uh, that's where it started with just a couple of goats and a couple of breedings and then all of a sudden we had I think it was maybe 20 goats and our vet asked us what our future plans were for the goats and I said I don't know just to play with them <laughs> and, <laughs> Be me. Right. And he suggested um, the goatscaping thing, which I thought was, I don't know, I thought it was really interesting, but I thought who around Rhode Island would want to do that. And sure enough, somebody contacted us and asked about it, and the goats were very excited. So the goat said, hey, we'll pay you to be our goatscaper. We just need somebody to drive us there. So I work for the goats, <laughs> and we go <laughs> where they want, but where they're in demand. And our first job was in Woonsocket, clearing a dam, and I would bring them there every day, set up a fence, they would um, clear a small spot of land, we'd pack up, go home for the day, and then that has evolved into I live on a bus with, during the goatscaping season, about 20 go 15 to 20 goats, and on the off season, it's just five goats and me on the bus. And so when you bring the goats there, I mean, do you have to go and actually physically look at the site first? Are there things that the goats can eat? Because I know when I saw them, I mean, I was amazed at the fact that they came in and ate the poison ivy like it was nothing. <laughs> oh, they, yeah, they love poison ivy. It's, uh, they, we do have to check for toxic plants. Um, actually, an episode up, coming up on GNN is going to be with a veterinarian about plant poisoning because this is the time of year where everybody seems to – get in trouble with that. The goats don't have anything green to eat, so they'll see rhododendron and they'll eat that. And that's very toxic. Uh, most of our guys have had it, that type of poisoning and they recognize not to eat it now, but occasionally they can accidentally eat it. So we do a site visit first, and uh, that's usually Jackie that does that. She'll go out, take a look at the job, figure out how long it will take, how much fencing it's going to take, and then she's, she and a, our and Jesse, they go out and set up the fence, get the area all ready, and then I drive up in a bus, park there for however many days they tell me I'm going to be there, and I hang out with the goats until they're done. <laughs> until they're done munching. So you do this for both um, commercial property and residential? Yes. Yes. Um, we do a lot of commercial properties. FM Global consumes a month of our five-month season. We do the EPA. Uh, yeah, we do, we do a lot of, a fair amount of commercial, and then we do a lot of coastal properties there inland a little bit, but it's areas that people just want to keep clear and not build on and not disturb the, the environment around, but clear out some of the invasive species. And so, you mean, you're talking about all types of plants, basically, when you say invasive species. Well, um, after you graze goats, they'll eat things like bittersweet, poison ivy, poison ivy's not an invasive species, but it is something people are looking to get rid of. But uh, bittersweet is one of our big ones, not weed. As the goats come back and they eat more and more, it brings back the indigenous plants, the, the natural grasses and stuff that they don't eat start to come back. So after a few years, like at the EPA, we used to spend, well, we still spend 10 days a year there, but we're getting now, after five years, we're getting six times the area done that we began with because the goats thin it out and allow the natural uh, foliage to come back. 
And so what is your average span? So say, for instance, you know, someone that I know has plants around their house or some poison ivy, a patch. Is that something that you could do within a day or do you feel like it's sometimes it takes several days? What's the average time that you're on? Or, or say residential first. Well, the residential stuff that's uh, handled by Jackie and Jesse uh, generally, and we're looking for um, an intern and another person to work pretty much full time, at least for the goat goat scaping season. Because we're so busy this year, we have two full-size buses, but the, we have um, a small bus, and the small bus is our day job. They go around to, you know, residential jobs generally, some small commercial stuff, and those jobs will be one to three days, but the bus doesn't stay there. The goats come, they eat what they eat during the day, and then they go home at night on the bus. Uh, my jobs are a minimum, I think she books me a minimum of four days, and that's uh, at least four nights, so I'm there for five days. And those jobs tend to be anywhere from four days to 15, 16 days. Now, for someone who might be interested in getting rid of some poison ivy on their property or whatever else, like you said, you know, invasive species, um, is it very expensive? I mean, because it seems like why not bring the goats in? It's, first of all, it's something beautiful to watch. They're amazing to watch them work. And it seems like it's the most natural way to sort of do this without harsh chemicals or stuff like that. So is it an expensive thing for someone if they're interested in goatscaping? Well, if they're interested in removing poison ivy and jobs that we can get into and uh, that are big enough for our goats to do, uh, those jobs we tend to be about half the price of the human way of removal, um, mostly because of the areas that people have to get into and the fact that it's poison ivy. I am one of the lucky 50% that don't get poison ivy, so I can get right in there with the goats, but most of the people do get poison ivy in landscape <laughs> companies. But I don't think they enjoy it too much because we do get, uh, when we do municipality and stuff, they always bid two different ways, and we do beat them on the price when it comes to... Um, Things like stone walls, uh, inaccessible areas, and poison ivy. Well, that's a good thing to know. And if someone is interested in goatscaping, I know I want to give the number out several times because it's just such a unique, I think it's very unique to have the goats come and take care of landscaping. If someone wants to reach out to you, how would they contact you? Um, best way is either by email, which is you can access online, and I would say the best way is to go to RI Goatscapes or Goatscapers, thegoatscapers.com. RI Goatscapes, I believe, is our Facebook. I don't do the Facebook stuff. Um, I do Instagram. <laughs> you I don't do have Instagram time. With, you're, well, you're on the bus with the goats. <laughs> no, I, yeah, exactly. And I, everything I post, I guess, to Instagram posts to Facebook. So that's, that's how that works out. But I know we are RI Goatscapes on um, Facebook. And anything else is Goatscaper. Uh, if you Google Goatscaper or if you're on Instagram, Goatscaper. Um, our phone number is 401-601-4538. That's another way you can text or call. Uh, leave a message. <laughs> um, it's a very loud farm. We're always doing loud projects. I don't hear my phone all the time. So uh, if you call, please leave a message. If not, uh, just text and I will get back to you. And someone will definitely get back to you and the goats. I, I, it's funny because you just say like the bus, like it's nothing. But I've seen this and this is the school bus, an old school bus. That you've turned into um, a goat carriage, so to speak. <laughs> you look inside and you tell us a little bit about how you came up with the idea to devise this setup for them to travel. Well, we uh, when we first started out, we had a van and a pop-up camper. And that was... Uh, that was kind of cumbersome to carry around. So we thought, what's tough enough? Because you can't use an RV. Goats would rip that apart. Um, even the, like the fiberglass buses that transport people are just not tough enough. So we thought school bus. It's one of the toughest vehicles on the road. It's made out of metal inside and out. They're very waterproof. And people make tiny homes out of them all the time. So my idea was instead of making the whole thing a tiny home, I made half of it a tiny home. And half of it a barn, and we all live in it comfortably. 
although I will say, while we're goatscaping, the five goats that live on the bus full time, they actually live up in my front living area. Uh, so <laughs> it, it's, it's all the living area is all made out of recycled pallet wood. And I did that because it's all hardwood and the goats are really rough on everything and climb on everything. So, you know, it had to be durable, but that's where we live. That's so, and that's why I call you the goat guy. You know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're, you're living and sleeping and, and busting and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we're going to keep you on, Wayne. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, and I want to keep you on because I want to tell folks about something new that you're doing called Goat News Network. And right. um, maybe talk a minute about Scooby Moo, your new cow. Uh, you have so much going on there at Rhode Island Goatscaper. So we'll be back in just a minute with more with Wayne and stay tuned for more Animal Talk. He was just telling me during the break, which I would say this is a one heck of a way to have a party. When he shows up with the goats, the neighborhood shows up <laughs> to watch the goats and they have uh, an outdoor goat party, something to watch, something to do during COVID. But Wayne, just a couple more things I wanted to touch base with you on is Something new that you're doing, uh, Goat News Network. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, GNN. Um, I love CNN, and I watch CNN and some of the uh, – Anderson Cooper, like I'm a big fan. So I thought, what can I do with the goats uh, that would catch people's interest uh, to support our sanctuary? We've started a YouTube channel, and I was just bouncing things around, and I learned – someone showed me – on their phone that they could make their cat talk for a few seconds and you could put your voice in. So I took that to a different level <laughs> and uh, um, I learned <laughs> how to actually animate the goats and let them talk and have a voice. And that's Goat News Network. Instead of CNN, it's GNN. And we have Anchor J that, in my opinion, is the closest you can get a goat to look like Anderson Cooper. His show is called um, 320 Degrees as opposed to 360 Degrees. The reason for that is because goats see 320 degrees around them. That last 40%, I guess, just won't matter. <laughs> so that's, uh, <laughs> they that's see what the, they uh, need to see. Yeah, so it's, it's a bit satirical, and we try to keep it funny, but anything um, that's like breaking news that we, we need to get out there, the goal is going to be to have a morning and an evening show, and it'll be goats talking, just giving you – it's because if you got to get news, you might as well hear it from a goat. <laughs> I think that's just the cutest idea. And it's on YouTube. You have a YouTube channel. Yes. And um, that's Goatscaper. That, that's that Goatscaper. And then yep. also I see, I've seen some of the clips on your Facebook page as well. Yes. Yep. Um, whenever I put up a new episode, I do link it to the, to the Facebook. Um, and we'll be putting out a lot more soon. I hope to do this interview and you and I will be goats talking to each other. I can't wait to be a goat. <laughs> and then I noticed recently I, I've seen some new photos on your Facebook page of a little cow, and you told me, a calf, that his name or her name is Scooby Moo. Is it a boy or a girl? It's a boy, Scooby Moo. <laughs> he, um, he comes from very, I guess, great bloodlines, but because he had a difficult birth, and I, I, I don't, I, I don't, Exactly understand cow breeding or breeding for a show and stuff like that, but apparently the ones that have issues or something, they go to slaughter, unfortunately. And the breeder of this one had fallen in love with him, didn't want to send him to slaughter, and offered him to a friend of mine. And she said, yes, I'll take him because I, I know once he's not being bottle fed, I know where I can send him. <laughs> and she called me and said, Wayne, do you want a cow? And I said, yes. And she said, well, okay. <laughs> Wait, can we just plan. call you for all the animals, Wayne? <laughs> well, for the, for the sanctuary, I, that's, the thing is, is Rhode Island doesn't have many sanctuaries. That's um, true. There's probably not a goat sanctuary our size in New England. But, but like, we would happily take any animal that we can afford to take. A cow's expensive, but the person that brought him here has helped us out and is continuing to help with his care. Um, anytime somebody wants to wants a companion animal to come hang out with, they're welcome to come down to the sanctuary, and you can sponsor them and help take care of them. And there's lots of things to do around here. Volunteers are always welcome. 
And can you tell folks um, where the farm is and what's the best way to reach out to you if they did want to come and help and volunteer? And also to that end, if you could tell folks some of the things that maybe you need as far as donations. I'm sure you go through tons of hay and all kinds of different feed, but I don't know exactly what it is that you need the most. We do. Uh, we do. Um, I think I have a breakdown of that on our Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash sanctuary of hope. Um, and there's different levels of sponsorship. But, yeah, we always need things like, hey, that's one of our biggest bills. The goatscaping takes care of about 50% of our bills, and the rest are donations and animal sponsors. And now we're trying to Goat News Network, and the more people that watch our YouTube, the, the better we'll be for helping to support the sanctuary financially. So for the goats, is it hay that you need the most? Oh, it's always hay. Yeah, hay and grain. And is there a specific place that you think folks should get it from? Because I don't know if you want to keep it sort of all the same, or do you just? It is essential that we keep the grain the same. Um, right. Hay right now is a shortage. We have we are lucky. We have a connection to it, but that's hay right now is at a shortage. Even our regular hay guy who has saved us hay cannot get it from New York because they're selling out. They had a rough hay hay year last year. Um, but yeah, that would be welcome. But we also, we use Ventura grain, which is, and I encourage anybody who has farm animals to use Ventura grain. They're a local grain company in Taunton, Mass. They make all their own grain right there. They can make it special order. Um, that's where we get our grain. So Ventura grain. Yep. So if folks want to help in that regard, they could do that too. And as far oh, as Scooby, perfect. as far as Scooby Moo, is there anything that he uh, is a true fan of that maybe folks could bring to you? Well, Scooby Moo, um, he keeps going through. He he needs a halter. That's what he needs. He's <laughs> Anybody so out fast. there can make a cow halter. <laughs> right. um, I have never seen a creature grow so fast. Uh, he's he came to us. He was I think four hundred pounds, and in two months he's put on another 100 pounds. So he's close to 600 now. Wow. Yeah, he's incredible. Uh, most playful creature you could imagine. You want to hug something, hug a cow. They're great. <laughs> they, oh, uh, I'm going to I want to come. I want to come to give Scooby Moo a hug. <laughs> oh, please do. Please do. He would absolutely love it. That's so great. Well, I appreciate all of the work that you folks do there and, you know, helping the goats. And I know you get goats from rescues and all kinds of different places and you're saving lives while you're doing great work there. Uh, just one more time, if you could give folks your telephone number. My phone number is 401-601-4538. Feel free to call or text. Thank you so much, Wayne, for joining us today. Again, this is Wayne from Rhode Island Goatscapes. They're doing great work. If you want your poison ivy removed, he's the guy to call, and he'll bring by a goat, a bus full of goats and a goat party all in one. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much, Aaron. 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 Thank you. You take care. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. And I appreciate everyone listening in today. I hope that you've been getting outside and enjoying this great weather with your pets. And listen, there's so many adoptable animals out there. I know I didn't get a chance to talk about them, but please visit my Animal Talk Facebook page. There you can see cats, dogs, rabbits, birds, guinea pigs.